Hey guys, welcome back. So, this is what we got today. This is called a snow basket and is used for snow removal on um, like loaders and things of that nature. So, we've actually um, made several of these. This is not one that I made. The ones that we made are a lot more streamlined looking. I'll post a couple pictures of the ones that we made. So the ones that we made have a bolt-on style coupler. So this is a quick coupler the machine can drive in, tilt back, hydraulic pins go in here, locks it in. You don't have to get out of the cab or anything. You could switch attachments real easy. So the ones that we made, the ones that, the ones that we manufacture have um, these plates. And then so we could just bolt couplers on. And the whole point of that is you could switch between a large coupler and a big coupler, depending on what size of machine you're running. And it makes it easy for selling them. You can just change, unbolt the couplers, swap them out. Or, you know, one customer wants a big coupler versus a little one, you know, you easily just unbolt it and put it on versus having to manufacture a whole snow basket. So this is the big style. This is a 418 style coupler. We, um, also do 416. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see um, there's two different sizes in that pile. So we are going to remove this. These cup, these um, yeah couplers. We're going to remove those, and then we're going to start mocking up our bolt-on plate, and then as well as the couplers that uh, fit on that one. Those are the plates that get welded on. Those plates are what will be bolted to those. So we are going to be using the carbon arc to remove those. And we're going to be using a Miller XMT 350. We have 425 amps. And we don't need three phase to run that, but we are hooked up to three phase that way it gives it its maximum output. So the machine can run on single phase or three phase. And all you have to do is turn it on or off. So there's the phase converter off, the machine still on and will still work for maximum output and lower amp draw will give it three phase power. So 425 amps, 5 16 carbon rods, Yeah, we're going to start blowing these off here. All right, change of plans. So apparently three people working in the shop keep stripping my breaker. So we're gonna run the old 600 Big Blue here, get her fired up. And we'll just air arc it outside the shop. It's better doing it outside anyways. I thought it was gonna keep raining, but it's like the clouds broke, so. Should have enough time to get these off here for the next storm. All right, now we can uh, continue what we started. Blow off these brackets.
All right, so after air arcing that a little bit, it looks like the, they did a good job in beveling that and the weld goes all the way through. I was hoping I could just blow the welds off and then those fall out. So with that being said, instead of air arcing through the entire plate, I'm just gonna use the plasma and we're just gonna cut that out. And that is inch and a half plate. So we'll just cut it out with the plasma and then we'll come back through with the air arc and clean it up. All right, <clears throat> you can see how we got that cut. It's a little bit sloppy, but that we're just trying to get it out of there. That's a pretty big cut for a plasma, I guess. Okay, now we're gonna go through and just kind of clean all that up. All right, so next day we uh, got this cleaned up. There were some cracks at the edges, bottom edges of those plates there, so we gouged those out. So now we're going to get these couplers situated here. And then uh, as I put these together, all of that will start to make a lot more sense. Just for comparison real quick, I'm gonna show you the, you can see the two different sizes. This is the bigger coupler, it's longer from here to here. This is the smaller coupler, shorter from here to here. So we're gonna be doing small couplers first on this one, because I need two more of these plates with the notches in the center. Um, so we're gonna um, yeah, set the two big ones to the side for right now. Then we're going to mock everything up with the small ones.
All right, so we have to modify these a little bit. These are cut for the snow baskets that we manufacture. And obviously I didn't make that one, so it's gonna, it doesn't, they don't fit exactly right. And then to make it look good, we're gonna have to modify these. So we gotta make these cuts on these white lines. And then we're gonna drill some new holes right here for the one inch bolts. And we also have to cut those because those are the ones that are gonna get welded into the basket and then there will also be new holes there. So, all right, let's get these cut and then uh, hopefully we can assemble these, bolt these together and then uh, hang them up there and kind of see how it fits. Okay, so for our cuts here, we're gonna be using the Milwaukee metal saw. We've got our, our uh, guide here lined up and they're just a little test cut and it's right on the money so we're just gonna cut right through that Something cool about this saw is it catches most of the shavings. Well, it's, it's overly full, but it'll catch a bunch of the shavings right there. So all you do is just dump it in your scrap bucket. That was empty before we cut that too. All right. All right, so now we've got our plates modified. Got our, our holes here. That way we have, you know, four bolts there, four bolts there. That's, there's no way that's ever gonna rip off uh, one inch bolts out of that. We did add this in here. If you're wondering what that is, that's a lifting point so that you can change couplers out. And that's a really good balance point for them. If you were to try to lift it here, it won't hang straight. Kind of a pain in the butt when you're putting it on. So we have a lifting point there. All right, now we're gonna get these tacked together and get them uh, get them square. We still have to put these pieces on here. So we get one of those on each side right there. Get one of these on each side 
right there. And what that does is it centers this kind of up in the coupler. This kind of takes up the, the little bit of a gap that's in there and then it adds a, uh, a bigger surface area for the pin because there's kind of a pin right here that sits in here. So it just gives it a bigger area. And then this is the stop for it, kind of a, a stop. So, all right, we'll get these all tacked up and then we're gonna preheat them and then uh, we might weld them out right now. One thing I wanted to point out, I don't know if anybody caught on to it, but you can see the gap here is smaller than the gap here. And the reason for that is when you build these with a small coupler, it's designed that the small gap goes to the inside. And then when you weld the big coupler to this plate, it's reversed so that the big gap will go to the inside and then the whole pattern stays the same. And then the inside face gets wider. So everything lines up correctly. So if you notice that, that's what that's all about. And then uh, I really love fireball tools. So we're gonna use that to, to hold it square. Okay, so that is uh, the couplers all tacked together. See, that's got a nice bumper there and how that kind of, that all fits together. Um, and then the notches, I'll flip them over so you can see it, but the notches there, you can see, um, we're able to weld that on the back side too. So it just adds even more strength, way more than it needs. All right. We're gonna get these flipped over. And we're gonna preheat them a little bit. We're gonna weld the back side, and then we're gonna weld this side. And then one of these is a little slightly out of square. And then I'll show you by putting an extra pass on one side, it'll pull it uh, straight. All right, got a preheated to 350. Got a couple passes on there. So 
So now we can uh, flip this one over and then uh, we'll, we'll preheat it more and then uh, weld the other side. All right, so we are going to preheat these up again, and uh, then we're going to weld these and these. That's just one pass. It's just to hold that there as a spacer, and then um, we're going to weld that. Get that welded up. Actually, we're going to weld these both sides, and then we're going to weld this in a flat position like that. So let's get this preheated and then get to welding. Nothing fancy, just your basic dual shield weld. All right, flip it over. Of course, we're out of wire. Of course, why not? All right, you just wire swapped out, and we'll be back. Okay, so this one is just slightly 
out of square. So if we weld a pass on this side, it will pull that straight. Now you can go too far. So the first pass on these, I like to skip around just a little bit. So I kind of try to lock in that squareness. So then after you have a full pass all the way down, plus the welds on the back side, they usually don't move after that. So we're gonna weld on this side and see if we can get that, that gap right there to close. Just enough to pull it. See that's flat to the bottom. Slide it in. Bam. Okay, so now that it's back square, <clears throat> we're gonna kind of skip around. And then as we skip around, we're gonna keep checking it with the square. Okay, well here's our three passes. It's 44 inches straight, no stopping. I think that's plenty strong enough because you have the welds on the back and that and we built about 10 of these and this is the way we've done it and never had an issue. So, um, basically I'm gonna do that to all, all the rest of this and then let it cool off. Probably be back on it in the morning. All right, so we have these, um, we got the bottom plates, which are gonna get welded to the basket. We have those and these coupler plates. They're all, they're bolted together for mock-up purposes right now. And then I have the two couplers sitting exactly square to each other and exactly the width that they need to be apart from each other. So instead of trying to fight it, I think I'm going to tack um, a couple pieces in between here to hold it exactly square to each other like they are right now. And then I can just pick that whole assembly up and then kind of just push it in there and hopefully everything fits. Looks like I'm gonna have to cut out some of those flat 
vertical bars on there. Um, so we might have to do that, but let's get these tacked together in a kind of a rigid setup. So that's kind of what that looks like. Just as I suspected, it hits right there. So we're just gonna remove this one and this one. And then uh, should still be pretty, should fill that in pretty well. I don't think they're gonna have an issue with anything. The snow just packs together like a big ball anyway. So it's obviously it doesn't have to be any, any type of close gaps. Okay. We'll get these cut off, kind of clean that up, and then uh, then we'll get, hopefully get her tacked in there. All right, we got those cut out and cleaned up. Now let's we'll see if uh, see if that coupler will fit in there. Okay, it fits, but I'm gonna tack a piece on there just to help with the alignment, and then we're gonna get her welded in, or tacked in. All right, we got it tacked on. So now we're gonna um, move it in the shop. Okay, so we got the coupler is uh, tacked on there. We're gonna break off our uh, alignment 
pieces we put on here should hopefully we should be able to break these off with the crescent wrench that one that one and then i did add this one up here so that it'll make um this back piece sit flush to to that face which is what we're trying to do so let's get these broken off we're going to unbolt the couplers and get them out of the way so that way we can fully weld these pieces on to the basket and then figure out a creative way to reinforce the backside. Okay, so here's the, the back side. Now we're, we're trying to do something like this. That's too small, but I'm trying to do something like that. So let's go see what we can find. Something about two inches or so. Uh, we'll, we'll go look around and see what we can find. We're gonna put that piece in there and then we might tie it, also tie it back into this gusset here. Might put a piece like that just to, just to add, add even more. All right, let's go look around. Oh, well, look it, looks like we found the perfect piece. Two by four, that'll fill in that gap perfect. All right, well, let's drag this out, cut two pieces out of it. Okay, we got three passes on the inside right here. I wanted to weld that out first. And then that tube fit in there. I notched the corners so that the tube will slide in there and not touch the weld. So we're gonna, the, these are slightly off center from that. So I'm just gonna line the tube up right on this. So it'll be slightly off center, which is fine. It's just like the, the other side. So we're gonna do that and get those 
straight intact in there and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, we got our reinforcing plates on the back side here. I welded the, the flat position stuff. Now we're gonna rotate it and then we'll, we'll put a weld there. When we manufacture our snow baskets, the ones that we build, we rotate them in stages and we weld everything flat. It's a lot easier to keep uh, a very consistent bead, especially if there's two or three different people welding on it. Everybody can kind of um, have very similar looking welds because as a lot of you know, you could walk up to a, uh, walk up to something and be like, oh, there's two or three different people that welded on this. Me personally, I don't like that in my products, so I wanna to try to keep everything as nice as possible. Our welds are definitely not gonna match these ones, but I think that's good that they won't. And I believe this whole entire thing was stick welded, which they're pretty good looking welds for, for being stick welded, I guess. All right, now we're gonna rotate this thing on its back, I guess you could call it, and then uh, get all this welded out here on the inside. Perfect. Okay, so we cut a couple extra gussets out of the pieces that we removed. We're gonna put them right there, get those tacked in, and then start welding all this out.
Okay, we got it flipped over the other way now. Now we can get up here and weld this crack up, weld this crack, and then weld that, weld that joint there. And we'll probably sand that flat because the bottom side overlaps a little bit. All right, let's uh, get this welded up. All right, looks like we got all the welding done on that. Just some nice, smooth flowing dual shield. I really like dual shield for stuff like that. Okay, now we can uh, probably flip this thing back over and then uh, start prepping it for paint. The customer does want to repaint the entire thing, so we're gonna prep it and paint it cat yellow. Well, we have a change of plans. I was actually gonna get this thing powder coated because I got a quote to sandblast it, and then they quoted to powder coat it, and it was actually cheaper uh, to do it that way than to have me paint it. But of course, there is some storms coming in and this customer wants it back right now. So we are not gonna paint it or blast it or anything. He's gonna take it as is, and then maybe after the season, um, he could paint it or whatever he wants. So this, I guess, is gonna be the finished product. For this video, I would have really liked to have painted it or powder coated it, but there is no time for that. And then we have those elder couplers, which are the larger style. Those are uh, also gonna go with it. They look exactly like those. All right, well, that will be it for this video. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.